This is my new daily driver, a 2005 Chevy Corvette. It's replacing my 08 Sky Redline that you can see in the background there. At the time of posting this, I've already owned this car for several years, and I've actually also sold it. In this video series, I'm going to document my experience daily driving a high mileage Corvette. I'm the fourth owner of this car, and I bought it from my dad in February of 2019 with just under 160,000 miles on it. He owned this car for about seven years, and I've been trying to get him to modify it for that entire time. It's completely stock right now and in need of some repairs. The first thing I'm going to take care of is the wheels. Now, I actually really like the look of the stock C6 wheels, but the chrome was peeling around where the tire beads causing multiple leaks. I replaced them with some TSW Nurburgring wheels in a Corvette specific fitment. Basically it's the same 18 inch in the front and 19 inch in the rear, but a half inch wider on both and with lower offset. The next issue I want to address is the stock sound system. It came with the Bose speakers and a touchscreen radio which the CD player no longer works in. And overall the sound system in the car just sounded pretty bad. So I don't know that much about car audio stuff and I remember doing a bunch of reading at the time about how to fix the stereo in this car and not really coming up with a clear answer so I just uh, ordered some speakers to replace what was in the car and an amplifier to power them and then a stock head unit that wasn't the touchscreen. First thing I did was pull the doors off and remove the speakers and then started disassembling the dash and while I was doing that I decided to go ahead and completely remove the dash and try and repair the HUD that wasn't working. The HUD comes apart pretty easily, it's only four screws, and then once you get inside it was pretty obvious what was broken causing the little mirror not to reflect onto the windshield. I took it apart and then cut up some 22 gauge stainless steel and epoxied it in place and then drilled new mounting holes because the problem was the plastic had broken on the original mounting holes. And after that I just put it back together and put it in the car and it worked fine. There's a couple buttons in the car that were completely worn out. 
So I went ahead and replaced those also while I had all of this apart. I removed the stock Bose amp and then just spliced into the speaker wire coming into that amp to run it into the new amp. Once I got everything installed, it still didn't sound good at all, so I ended up going to a local stereo video place and impulse buying this Alpine head unit, and then got rid of the amp and just ran speaker wire from the back of the head unit directly to the speakers. It sounded a lot better, but it still wasn't what I was really hoping for. At this point, the brakes were getting pretty squeaky, so it was time to replace them. I ordered this PowerStop Z23 brake kit, stainless brake lines, and a couple grommets for the calipers, all from Rock Auto. Normally I'm not a fan of the slotted and drilled rotors, but the Z51 package on the Corvette comes with drilled rotors, and I feel like the look just kind of fits the car. Plus these really weren't that much more expensive than ordering blank rotors and performance pads separately. Overall I really liked these brakes on the car, and wouldn't hesitate to buy them again.
I went with my go-to brake fluid, the ATE Type 200. I went ahead and bled all four brake calipers, and then while I was right there, I bled the clutch also. I lowered the car down, and then went for a drive to bed in the brakes. That's going to be the end of this episode. I've got three more episodes in this series, so be sure and go check those out.